Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode from my video series, COVID-19 Isolation Strategies for Muslims. My name is Princess Lakshman. I live in Brisbane, Australia. I'm a writer and a life coach, and this is my attempt to be of service to my Muslim brothers, sisters, and children during this isolation period. So today I wanted to talk about respecting and understanding our children. Children often do as we do, not as we say. It is vital that we first respect and understand them before we expect them to respect and understand us. As parents, we may have the benefit of age, experience, and sometimes vocabulary. However, we too are children at the core of our being, and we have the ability to relate to most or all of the emotional ups and downs that our children experience daily. We expect our children to respect us. The real question is, do we respect our children? And what do we say or do in order to display that respect? Respecting anyone means to have regard for their feelings, rights and wishes. When you respect, you are one step closer to understanding. When you understand someone, there is no room for assumptions or accusations. Take a moment and ask yourself, when was the last time you displayed regard for your child's feelings, rights and wishes? And how did you display this? Having an attitude of respect and understanding is not the same as practicing them. As parents, it is vital that children actually see us practicing respectful words, respectful actions towards them and others. So I'm going to give you 10 strategies um, on how to respect and understand your children. Number one, talk to them. Put your gadgets away, look them in the eye, and verbally connect with them. A great way to start is to ask an open-ended question which invites an elaborate answer. For example, what were some of the things that you did today or that happened today that made it a wonderful day for you? Number two, listen when they reply. And I say, listen. Do not formulate a response while they are speaking. Do not cut them off while they are speaking. Just become fully engaged. Observe their body language. A lot is communicated through body language. Number three, always compliment a good behavior. If the behavior has been negative, look for moments when they're silent and compliment on their efforts to refrain from the negative behavior. For example, saying something like, I'm very pleased with you today that you are trying your best to respect our agreement about internet use. That's just an example I'm throwing out there. Number four, speak well about those that your kids love. For example, you may not be very close to your in-laws, but that does not mean your child has to inherit your opinions about them. And the same goes for people who are separated or divorced. You, don't, you may not get along with your ex-partner, but you don't have to and you don't have to impose that kind of dislike and hatred to your children. Respect their love for them. Speak well about those they love. Number five, respect their fears and sentiments. Right now, a lot of us are fearful. Children too can inherit fears from their parents. So just be mindful of how much fear you are holding. And if your child displays fear, acknowledge that. Fear is very real to the person experiencing it. You do not have to encourage it, but you need to show sensitivity that it is real to your child. For example, saying something like, I know it makes you fearful when you think about your exams or all the missed classes from school. I know this is a hard time. I used to be the same when I was in school. Things used to make me scared too. I know how you feel. We're in this together. I understand. And I'm so pleased that you're trying your very best. And that's all that matters right now. We're in this together. That's all that matters. Allah rewards efforts, not results. So let's keep doing our best together. That's an example. Number six, do not bring up past behavioral issues when addressing a new issue. Telling them you can no longer trust them because they lied to you last year about a fake 
Facebook account, for instance, is not going to resolve anything. Instead, have a respectful discussion about having boundaries around the current situation. You know, for example, internet usage or too much time on the phone or on the PlayStation. So have a respectful discussion about what is relevant right now, not about what happened in the past. Number seven, show good manners so that they can emulate good manners. So saying things like please, thank you, I'm sorry to your child does not mean you're weak. In fact, it displays good manners and your child will learn to treat you and others with the same respectful manners. Number eight, never laugh at their mistakes. Never belittle them and never insult them. Doing these will hurt them and scar them for life. You only have to access your own unhealed childhood pain to realize that somewhere deep inside you is a memory of an adult who may have laughed at your mistake or insulted you or belittled you. So go back to that memory and, and know that if you do this to your child, that will scar them for life. Number nine, this whole um, adage, this, this traditional mindset that we have, I'm big, you're small, therefore I'm right, you're wrong. Lose it. Never imply or say this. Your children are human beings created by Allah and deserve the same respect and joy as you or any other human being on earth does. They are neither beneath you nor above you. They deserve equality the same way you do. And number 10, explain yourself clearly when you set boundaries. If you need to prohibit something, Get them to sit and discuss the best strategies that will benefit the entire family. Show them that you treat them with fairness and that this is a home with love and understanding. It's not a house with a dictator in it. So involve them in finding the best solutions to the problems that you are facing in the house. I hope this has been helpful. Please share it with your friends and family members. And uh, inshallah, I can be of service again in my next video. Jazakallahu khair for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.